Talk about how working with uh, Ben in Treatment Center has helped you with your own sobriety. Has it helped you in your journey? And would you encourage other addicts to take this approach with their own struggles with addiction? Working with Ben in Treatment Center has has became a very pivotal point in my sobriety. They told me early on, stand for something or fall for anything. Okay. People had told me for years that helping other addicts would be my calling. I never saw that. I knew that my book helped people. I knew that my testimony helped people, but I never saw the results because I would drink or drug. Finally, after I was clean for a year, they approached me and what happened was they saw in me what I did not see in myself at this point. And they saw the power that my message held. So what I do now is I travel the nation speaking to high schools, colleges, rallies, and share my story. And when I'm done, I get multiple phone calls from people saying, Novak, if you can get clean, there's no reason why I can't. Can you help me? Seriously, that is like... I, hold on, I gotta go. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I finally believe what people told me for years. That this is my calling. I am at the most peace when I can, God willing, help the person that is deemed unhelpable or unfixable such as I was for 24 years. Twenty-four years? Yeah. Okay. At the end of the day, what I try to do is prevent one more mother going to one more of their kids' funerals. texts seriously I think that could be the best like slogan for you in a way it's like if I can do this yeah literally if I can do this anybody can do this there's absolutely no reason yeah I remember times being with you and just being like like are you gonna die on my sofa yeah like I remember times I'm gonna post this real fast and all like I I have clear memories of you sitting on my sofa right down the street at Alex's house on Walnut Street sitting on my sofa strung out. I don't know what you were on, but you were like pale and drooling and like calling Abby like what the fuck do I do? You know what I mean? And like yeah. I remember that and just being like, are you going to die on it? Yeah. Am I going to be the one that has to call everybody and says, no, back's fucking dead. You yeah. know? But I think that really is the biggest testimony to your sobriety is that you finally, it finally clicked for you at a, at a point. <coughs> like you're, you know, we always used to say like you were the, you, you and a couple of cockroaches were going to survive the nuclear holocaust because you had survived, right? I mean, am I right? Yeah, like, yeah. you had survived everything. And now you are at a point where it's like, you're free of that. Yeah. You know, you're free of that. Now, just for today, obviously, maybe sure, tomorrow, sure. tomorrow could be, you know. And that's why I believe, a, yeah. I, now it makes sense to me when Banyan employed me mm -hmm. to do this for a living. I see that God brought me through that to do this. Right. 
right. now I stand all for something so things, I don't fall for anything. All of these things yeah. in your life have led you to this Here. point right now. And I didn't go in search of this. Right. I didn't look for this job. It found me, meaning that my creator, my higher power that I choose to call God, right. aligned this. Mm -hmm. I played no part in this. This you is know? all part of that yeah. master plan what for you. I right. did not see. Right. Never what I've seen in the million years. It's amazing. It really is. It's amazing. It's yeah. amazing to be, as I said to CJ earlier when we were talking, it's amazing to, like, when I first talked to you after, I guess you've been sober for a couple months, maybe yeah. a year at that point, and I remember just saying, I said to Courtney too, I was just like, this is unbelievable to speak to you right now. You are, it's a night and day situation. You are a completely different person than I knew all those years ago. Yeah. And I, I was blown away by I that. Was I was just talking, like, holy shit. I was like, talking to my sponsor before I came here. And he's a therapist here in town, 15 years sober, really intelligent dude. And I was talking to his coworker who has like 12 years sober. And his coworker went back to my sponsor and he said, fuck, Novak's a really intelligent dude. Yeah. And people, and now when I meet people, they're like, fuck, this is not what I expected. Mm -hmm. Not only am I having an intelligent conversation with you, I'm having one of the more intelligent conversations I've had with anybody. I don't. I, I don't want. I don't mean to say that I don't think that. No, you're, no, yeah, an intelligent no, not person, at all. But no. I feel like intelligent people and creative people and artistic people tend to be the ones that like. There always seems to be a common theme. Like there's always some sort of demons that are hiding because you have these people who I feel like people who are overly you know like like just are incredibly smart, incredibly talented. They're all, there's always something that's stewing. Like think about people like Amy Winehouse. Yeah. Think about yeah. people like Miles Davis. Think yeah. about people who have Kurt Cobain have these demons that are inside of them, but yeah. create the most amazing, prolific, uh, artistic representations Life of our time. Right. Like things. I think about the first time you heard Amy Winehouse yeah. belt something. You're like, holy shit, this yeah. human is unbelievable. And, and that's all how the you people felt. in her life, the producers, the the right. writing executives, what happened was they saw in her what I people. can probably say she did not see in herself. Right. And she unfortunately took that step yeah. and and she was unable to come out of that tailspin yeah. but you are yeah so you have this amazing opportunity in front of you to say i've been through this i know how this goes i've lived this and i know how to help get you out of it right trust me yeah and i will get yeah. you through this yeah. and i think that's that's a huge part of that's a huge component of this entire thing and a huge i mean that's that really is that is your calling that is who you that is who you are now. Yeah. Who you were before is what you're working on and making amends for and atoning for. Exactly. That's all there. I'm owning that. But this is who I am today. Yeah. And today I'm going to tell you that yeah. I'm I'm here for you and I'm gonna and that's that's amazing. Absolutely. It really is. It's an amazing it's an amazing thing to watch. I love watching all the comments that people put on your page. I love Isn't when it you funny, post stuff. You, you like the comments are literally night and day. <laughs> <laughs> it's Before unbelievable. Ninety nine percent of people just die already. Just fucking, why yeah, are you still why, alive? How are you alive? Why yeah. don't they kick you they out? Fucked up my rider. celebrity death pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's like, thank God, for, thank you for helping me get sober. For sure. Keep doing. It's like night and day. Yeah, literally. It's um, it really is. It's unbelievable, and I I love watching it. I even love the when you write things like, can anybody help me find it? like a, a halfway house or a, yeah. is there a 12 step meeting anywhere in the Baltimore area yeah. in the Bucks County because it's like you're out there in the streets you're out there in the world making a change for people making yeah. a difference for people and that's really what it's to me that's what it's all about that's I, I believe the stigma of addiction is being lifted man. oh for because sure before, for sure. For years all I heard was junkie rehab junkie yeah. junkie rehab death that cyclical thing now yeah. you hear like junkie rehab 25 years sobriety mm -hmm. I was on the board with the senator the other night, junkie rehab senator, junkie rehab author, yeah, the fucking sky's the limit. What, to me it's like, it. it's, even when you hear things about like, unfortunately it's something like with even with Philip Seymour Hoffman, to quote, to pull another person in who was so ahead of, I wouldn't want to say ahead of his time, but somebody who was so prolific in what he did and so good at what he did, and here to find out that he was 20 some years sober yeah. from addiction, and you're like, and I just, this guy? I like, just really? watched his like, thing, the last 24 hours of him. And, and he, he started out with a glass of champagne after his movie premiered. Mm -hmm. And then that's right what... Right back off. And that's, that, it literally, it, it is, you know, like I said, from working with, with people in the network that I know in the, in the sober world and, and the 12-step program, when you hear that stuff, it's, it literally is, all it takes is one second in your head to yeah. say, I can handle this, I got it now, because I'm at 10 years, 15 years, yeah. 20 years. 
I'm good. I can handle this. Yeah. And the next thing you know, like, and you've said it before, at the bottom of that glass of wine is a needle. Every time. I'm one Every bad time. decision away from God willing you coming to my funeral. Right. And I don't want to do that. I've buried enough exactly. friends. And I don't. It doesn't have. And that's no. what I'm saying. It doesn't have to be that way. And that's thank God this thing could be lifted. Absolutely. And ultimately, when I have a glass of wine, I end up homeless in Baltimore City every time.